Welcome back to your friends. This week, we're going to continue our discussion about change and we're going to engage with a project that's going to kind of honor that change and help us stay open to it and be flexible because that's how we can be resilient. So uh, the first method, and I showed you a lot of stuff last week and combined um, two videos into one really short one. And today we're going to go back to the iron on transfer. And so what I've done is I've taken these lovely snapshots and that I found, uh, you know, I either have on albums or um, this one is framed and it'll have to go back to its special place. And this one as well, or kind of like your box, but old photos. And then I use this inkjet printable fabric that's iron on. And so that's what I did with these. And I liked them as black and white. I know that you'll see that they're in color. Honestly, at the time, I didn't really have a lot of colored ink in my printer. I've since replaced it, but I think I want to stick with black and white. So I'm gonna move those things out of the way. And why the black and white? Why these old ones? And who are these people? And maybe I'll add to some other ones. So with change, in order to really recognize where we are and how much has changed, and you don't have to go back too far with this with your own project, but for me and where I am in, in life, I feel myself reflecting a lot back to whenever I was a kid or thinking back to you know, where I'm from, who I'm from. Um, this is my mom when she was very young. Her name was Verna. And I just love this picture because she's really goofy and it shows her personality. And she just always seemed fearless to me. This is her later in life, really about my age right now. And um, I love, we went to Cozumel, uh, just the two of us with, I guess, some of her friends, but just the two of us from our family. And it's one of the memorable things that I have. Uh, she died in about 2010, right about three weeks before I had my youngest daughter. And then this is my grandma, her mother, and my grandma and her first name is Leona. And um, she's young and, and I've been told that I look a lot like her. Um, this is my childhood home, which is still standing, and I know you can't probably see, but just a little picture of my brother actually running around, and um, I really just picked it because it was an old picture of me. I live in the city now, and this is in a rural area uh, in northern Missouri at um, my childhood home where my dad still lives, and you know, I think I've been thinking a lot about that time and the benefits of that. So. I'm going to set those to the side for a little bit and show you what we're going to do. So first off, and I know if I don't do this, everybody's going to say, you should have ironed it. But this is fabric that I find really hard to get all the wrinkles out. So yes, I am going to give it a nice thorough press, make sure that it's as hot as I want it to because the um, iron on elements that I'm going to add over there um, are really going to benefit from that. So I'll show you. So there we go. So if I didn't say so last week, I've kind of forgotten if I did, I'm going to make this into a placemat and it's kind of big right now, but I'm anticipating kind of cutting off. So you're going to see me working a little bit more in the middle. And yes, we'll get to the sewing part, but first I want to get to the composition part. So for me, I don't need this to be circle, um, circular or cyclical in a cycle and start with my past. And, you know, I could do it that way if I wanted to compose this piece with past and then present or maybe future or have myself in the middle and I may not do that. Um, but I'm just going to kind of spread these out. And this is where, you know, if you haven't ever painted or drawn, um, I'd encourage you to consider something like that because it really helps me um, consider composition and like where I want each of these things. I really don't think that there's a right or a wrong answer, but 
for me, as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking about these are three pictures um, of portraits, basically, and then this one's more um, of a place. And so how do I go about positioning these things in a way that I like? And so I don't really know. I just kind of go with what seems like I like it for now. And I think I think I want to keep my grandma and the younger picture of my mom up here. And I think I want to kind of keep it maybe not perfectly. I'm not going to like measure or, or situate it, you know, with a ruler or anything. I'm just going to kind of eyeball about where I like it. You're just kind of, I kind of like keeping them together. And I'm making this little space here because I'm going to sew along in there. And then I'm going to kind of have this down here because I kind of like this separate by itself. So the way that this is made, it has a little backing and I'm always terrible at peeling these backings off. I don't know how you feel about that with yourself. Those stickers and things. Um, one point, my mother-in-law, whom I absolutely adore, did send at my children a whole bunch of stickers with that peeled off and while my and they were foam the foam stickers and while we were of course appreciative of that they these little papers when they're a little bitty and off of stickers oh my gosh they can be a mess I think I found them all over the house for uh I might still be finding them all over the house actually no <laughs> my kids are grown so I'm going to do one more and while I'm doing this um, and I know I'm at the end you know you follow the directions I wasn't going to spend a lot of time on showing you how to scan and upload photos onto your computer um, just find if you like the iron-on piece of this and think that it would be kind of fun to use and different you know, this is just one brand, but I'm sure that there's plenty of different ones. And then, not on the back, but inside there were directions. So, um, we'll get some help from some others who are knowledgeable about that. So, I, a long time ago, purchased this pressing sheet, and it's even kind of wrinkly. Um, what I like about it is I can see through it. Um, and you know, you can put a towel or anything on there. Um, but what I'm going to do is just iron over this and it's going to be, um, stick on there really nice, but you have to do it first. I'm just going to kind of go over the whole thing. And some of you might ask me where I got this and I think I got this at Joann's, but I'll see if I can look up something like this if you like the pressing cloth it's just something that I usually roll up and keep in a little cylinder and write down that way as just really a window um, and I keep it on the windowsill so I'm gonna I feel like every time I video my iron beeps I apologize if somebody gets really annoyed by that So before you get too excited, it's always good to test it. And of course, for safety, always wait. Sometimes I have to. And I'm gonna just make sure that they're all on. Yep, that worked beautifully. All right, here it is. And it's while it's cooling, I'm gonna get my thread ready and pick out a needle. I know that um, one or two of you asked me about this little needle case, and I guess I was assuming that you could kind of see the series of my little videos. This was one of the first things that I made with a slow stitch, uh, talking about meditation, and I made it into a little needle book with just some, really some leftover felt from projects that my girls have had. And it's so nice to just store your needles. If you don't have a needle 
something to store your needles in. You can't even imagine how life-changing it's going to be when you do. I've been prone to really love these really thin needles, and I kind of like the length of them, especially when I was doing bullion knots. So I'm going to use this one, and I'm going to put that to the side. So I'll see if I can link this or figure out how to link it to this video. And if you like that little book, it's very simple to put together. Um, you can make one of your own, especially when you're making your little your little thing. So I'm going to thread this real quick. And it is a variegated rust color. I just really loved that color. I wanted something that was a little bit antique looking, given the black and white photographs. And that's that. So for this, I think I'm going to, well, and this has six strands. And so I just took two out. That's typical for me. I don't usually like to sew with very thick thread. I don't really know why. Personal preference. You do you, as they say. Even doubling this up kind of feels like a lot to me, but I, you know what? I'm not going to actually. Because I'm going to lose some of the variegation. There we go. Purposes for everything. And you'll see me sometimes doing this, just pulling my hand along the thread. I think I've said I learned this from a course that was virtual from Alabama Channon, Natalie Channon. She talks about loving your thread. It's very soothing as well. And the idea is that it takes some of the twist out so that your thread is less likely to tangle. Like if outside of the camera, this is already kind of twisted. So, you know, it's not a perfect thing. It still could be that way. So what am I going to do with this thread? And what, what are we going to do to change? Well, I, I'm going to build up this space and we're going to use all the materials that I showed. I also am not just going to focus on this for um, on my past. And actually, you know, I could be really sad about the fact that I think this lost its color due to the heat, but actually I really love that, especially over here. It looks kind of sunset -y. Um, I'm going to do one of two things. First, I'm going to really just kind of go around and frame some of these and this particular thread. And then eventually I'm going to get into actually sewing onto the picture and adding some little things. Uh, I really love that and I hope you'll like that technique too.